public audience is going to see your work. How are you feeling? Feel great. Like I feel like we've been working on this for over a year, and so it's like great that it's finally getting out there into the world. And uh, yeah, I just anxious to share it. So some filmmakers would be terribly nervous at this point. Would be well shaking in their boots. Oh. So. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel quite calm. Like I feel really fine. Like I, I feel I am quite confident with the film, and I, um, you know, we had a lot of integrity, and so I, I hope that resonates with the audience. That's all I can do. Yeah. What you're coming to see tonight? Yes, well, I'm coming to see specifically Auntie by Lisa Hereward. Are you? Yeah. Are you a supporter of Lisa? I am. Oh, That's wow. Amazing. Fantastic. How are you feeling? I know you were a little bit nervous earlier. How are you feeling now that the public are going to see your work? I'm still a little bit nervous because I haven't seen it, uh, it on anything bigger than a computer screen and I haven't seen it since December. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's the first screening in front of other people besides my crew, you know, so of course it's nerve wracking, but I'm excited. What's the thing that makes you want to put your work in front of is that something you can describe or that's a clear? It isn't even really necessarily about my work, but um, I do feel like like a lot of Pacific filmmakers I've spoken with this week is that you don't often see ourselves reflected on screen in a way that seems very accurate to our own experiences. So since nobody's, not nobody, but they're very few people making that work, I felt like instead of complaining about that, I should make my contribution. And there are tons of other filmmakers in the Caribbean doing the same. So it's a great movement happening right now. So it's great for me that I get to represent them and represent that movement. Well, that's really exciting. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Your season? Ready to see what? I don't know. Some inspiring Pacific storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm waiting to be inspired by some voices from the region because um, we don't often have our voices expressed in the film. So, um, yeah, I'm really I'm looking forward to what's So, there's five short films tonight. One of them is from. Uh, an offering from Oscar Kaitley, and the other four are from other Commonwealth countries, Barbados, Kenya, uh, many different uh, Commonwealth countries come together, so there's all sorts of different stories tonight. It's exciting. Hey, New Zealand launch. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully from here, they'll grow to the whole world. Yeah, no, I really want to see the, the links between Indigenous and the points of commonality, but, but also the differences and things, and it's just such an amazing opportunity to see everything. Do you have any idea what you're about to see? Um, no. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you afterwards about what, what you saw, right? didn't expect it, My name is Alex Lee. I'm the director of the Documentary Edge Festival. My co-director Dan Shannon is back. We're very pleased to be able to welcome you tonight to the world premiere of the five Commonwealth shorts that have been made uh, by the Commonwealth filmmakers as part of the program. Yes, thank you. Uh, five Commonwealth shorts were made as part of a program that was initiated by the Commonwealth Foundation. The partners in the program are the Commonwealth Foundation, which is represented by Lucy Hanna, the uh, program manager, and she'll come up in a minute to speak to you 
uh, Mark Booth of B3 Media in the UK. Mark, can you just raise your hands? And we have the support of the New Zealand Film Commission and Lisa Chatfield is representing the New Zealand Film Commission tonight. So without too much ado, I would like to invite Lucy Hanna to come up to tell you why this program was created and, and what it is achieving. Lucy. Hello, I should say, I'm going to say hello, because I'm going to get pronunciation wrong otherwise. <laughs> um, hello, and I just want to welcome you all here, and also Sir Anand, who's the new chair of the Commonwealth Foundation. I can't see him, but there he is. He's here. Um, almost a year ago, we were sifting through more than 800 applications to this scheme, 800 ideas from emerging enthusiastic filmmakers who wanted to make a short piece on the theme of relationships. At the end of the day, we developed seven scripts and we made five, the five that you're about to see. Now, as Alex mentioned, this couldn't have happened without our partners from the very beginning. B3 Media, who are here in the form of Mark Booth, um, CBA Worldview, and of course it couldn't have happened without the incredible hard and committed work from the five filmmakers who were selected. Kareem, Jules, Lisa, Wanjiru, who's on her way here now. Um, who have I forgotten? Oh, Sorry. Oscar! Oscar! Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we couldn't have obviously done anything without um, their incredible hard work. And it's been a very long journey, not least to get here. Uh, namely Wanjiru, who has literally flown from Kenya via China, landed at 5 p.m. and will be joining us any second now. Um, we tried to get her here via various routes over the last week or so and failed. Um, so with any luck, she will, she will be appearing. And it's been a long journey in more ways than one. Um, there aren't many schemes where writers and script editors, producers work entirely remotely for many months. Skype, email, phone, every single way you can think of how of communicating to, from the beginning to the end to get these films made. And it's sort of been quite a surreal experience to then meet for the first time. The filmmakers met Mark uh, and I here for the first time after nine months of development work. So that's almost a short film in itself and on the theme of relationships. <laughs> a, a, a comedy drama, I think, probably. Um, but um, this work also couldn't have happened, this week, I should say, couldn't have happened without our local partners, Alex and Dan from DocNZ, who've really helped to pull this week together over the last month or so. Lisa Chatfield from the New Zealand Film Commission, who supported this project, and AUT, who've given us the most fantastic space where we've been running a production lab for the last two and a half days, and tomorrow we're, making, we're doing a day-long workshop. So thank you all very much. Without you, this simply couldn't have happened. Commonwealth Writers, for those of you who don't know, is the cultural initiative from the Commonwealth Foundation. It celebrates and promotes literary excellence, but most importantly, it builds communities of writers and dramatists across the world who want to make a difference through their work. And these five films are fantastic examples of that. They're all poignant, contemporary, relevant, and most of all, they're written from the heart. And they're really all being made by strong voices in places often where it's very hard to be heard. 45, for example, 45 out of 54 Commonwealth countries currently criminalise homosexuality, and Kenya is one of those. We wanted to launch these films in the country of one of the filmmakers, and we wanted to launch them in a place that really cares about telling stories and looks after its stories. And there's no better place than that than New Zealand and Auckland and Oscar Keitley, who I hope some of his cast and crew are here, are they? <laughs> we obviously really enjoyed making it. <laughs> uh, good, well, welcome. We want to do a big welcome to them. 
So we're very privileged to be sharing our big welcome for one Juru, who's just arrived all the way to Kenya. So this is the first, this is a fantastic effort after months of development work, one Juru has now walked into a physical space. <laughs> So we're really privileged to be able to share these films with you and I think on behalf of B3, CBA World View and the Colmar Foundation to thank you for having us here and I do hope you enjoy them. Thank you.